भगवते वासुदेवाय Shloki section of the verses. Um, we will just do a small recap of what we did yesterday. Namo Vishnu Pada, Krishna Prashthaya Bhutale, Shri Mate Bhakti Vikasa Swami Dinamine. Namo Vishnu Pada, Krishna Prashthaya Bhutale, Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Dinamine. Namaste Saraswati Devi, Gauravari Pucharine, Nirmishe Shushunya Vari Paschati Reshitarine. Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadha, Shri Vasa, Gauravakta Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Um, so yesterday um, we saw how um, Lord Brahma requested uh, the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna to um, clarify some of the questions he had regarding the forms of the Lord, regarding the position of the Lord. Uh, regarding the influence of the uh, energies of the Lord. So, so, the Lord gave him assurance that, yes, I am going to explain to you in detail about, in four verses, the Lord explained the uh, answers for these questions. That's one. And also, even before, beginning to answer those questions, he, as a prelude, he said, what, are those, what is it that I am going to speak to you? So, he's going to give you, he's going to give him the knowledge then the realized knowledge and then um, that knowledge of how Krishna is supreme and um, how he is eternal and how he is personal, he is a person and also how his energies, how there is a, the, how there is a energy of Yoga Maya and Mahamaya and uh, how uh, when we don't see that Krishna is the cause of everything then we are just um, carried away by the um, influence of the external energy or which is Maya and uh, so Krishna says that uh, when we are not in, in this internal potency or when we are not in, in line with this service then this is what happens. So these are the things that we saw yesterday. Just to put it in uh, the way how Srila Prabhupada puts, in, puts it in the Adi Leela of the Chaitanya Chaitanya Parpat, Srila Prabhupada says in the first verse refers to the transcendental nature of Krishna then uh, who is the Supreme Personality of God. The second verse is very clearly, it explains how the Lord is detached from the workings of the material Maya. The Lord is not attached to it, although that energy also manifests from him, he is not attached to it. The living entities, all the parts and parcels of Lord Krishna are prone to be controlled by the external energy. Therefore, although they are spiritual, the material world, they are encased in bodies of material energy. So in the letter we also saw the, the jivas are getting into different bodies, 84 experiences of bodies are there, how they are transformed, that is also discussed. And, uh, and also, we come to know that there is an eternal relationship of the living entity with the Supreme Lord. So this is what Shri Prabhupada also hints at. And uh, we will again recap the verse and the translation before we uh, try to deal with some more explanations that uh, Shri Prabhupada uh, elaborates on, the, um, on this particular uh, verse text. 34. Okay. Um, Brahma it is high, the personality of God who was existing before the creation, when there was nothing but myself, nor was there the material nature, the cause of this creation. That which you see now is also I, the personality of God and after annihilation, what remains will also be I, the personality of God. Text 34. Ritertam yat prati yeta na prati yeta chatmani tat vidyat atmano mayam yata bhaso yata tamaham. O Brahma, whatever appears to be of any value, if it is without relation to me, has no reality, know it as my illusory energy. That reflection which appears to be in darkness. So now um, 
what we plan to do is before we uh, start the text 35 we will uh, we will see the again some other points are there in the Chaitanya Charita of the purport of, of this verse so we will go through that and then we will go to the text 35 okay so I am going to read the commentary of Srila Prabhupada for text 54 from Adi Leela what appears to be true without me is certainly my illusory energy. For nothing can exist without me. It is like a reflection of a real light in the shadows. For in the light there are neither shadows nor reflections. Okay. In the previous words, the absolute truth and its nature have been explained. One must also understand the relative truth to actually know the absolute. This we heard yesterday. The relative truth which is called Maya or material nature is explained here. Maya has no independent existence. One who is less intelligent is captivated by the wonderful activities of Maya, but he does not understand that behind his activities is the direction of the Supreme Lord. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is said, Maya Dekshena Prakriti Suyate Sacharacharam. The material nature is working under working and producing moving and non-moving beings only by the supervision of Krishna. So there is nothing which exists separate from Krishna. Are you getting this point? This is what in the very first paragraph of Prabhupada is pointing out. That this Maya is, she is not something separate. She is Krishna's energy as well. The real nature of Maya, the illusory existence of the material manifestation is clearly explained in Srimad Bhagavatam. The absolute truth is substance and the relative truth depends upon its relationship with the absolute for its existence. Maya means energy. Therefore, the relative truth is explained to be the energy of the absolute truth. So, this energy is not separate. This energy is part of the law. Since it is difficult to understand the distinction between the absolute and relative truths, an, an analogy can be given for clarification. The absolute truth can be compared to the sun, which is appreciated in terms of the two relative truths, reflection and darkness. Darkness is the absence of sunshine, and the reflection is a projection of sunlight into darkness. Okay? So both this darkness and reflection cannot exist without, without the light or without the sun. Okay. Mm. Neither darkness nor reflection has an independent existence. Darkness comes when the sunshine is blocked. For example, if one stands facing the sun, his back will be in darkness. Since darkness stands in the absence of the sun, it is therefore relative to the sun. Correct? That's a very nice point Prabhupada is making. So darkness is relative to the sun and because of the block you are able to see the darkness otherwise there is no darkness where there is darkness hmm? the spiritual world is compared to the real sunshine and the material world is compared to the dark regions where the sun is not visible so how that dark region is being formed that we know because of the desire of the jiva the jiva wanted to be independent of the lord so the lord has to make some arrangements okay that's why we can see in the goloka chart the corner of the cloud there is so sorry, in the corner of this, in the eastern side corner of this, this spiritual abode, there is clouds being formed. Sometimes clouds are being formed. Huh? When the material manifestation appears very wonderful, this is due to a perverted reflection of the supreme sunshine, the absolute truth, as confirmed in the Vedanta Sutra. Many times you can see Prabhupada Prabhupada also, whenever uh, he used to travel or wherever he used to go for morning walk, uh, sometimes devotees saw the material nature, they saw wonderful waterfalls, big mountains, Wow, wonderful. Then Prabhupada will just say, if this looks wonderful, how wonderful will be the creation, uh, the Lord himself. Because he is the source of this. You are, you are fascinated by this creation here, and which is a perverted reflection of the real spiritual world. Isn't it? So what is the point in being fascinated by seeing what is, what is what are the wonders here? These wonders are bhutva bhutva praliyate. <laughs> it comes and goes. But that abode of the Lord, nirastha kohakam, satyam parangdimahi. There is no uh, fault in that uh, abode which is eternal and which is full of bliss and uh, knowledge. Okay. Whatever one can see here as a substance in the absolute, as darkness is situated far away from the sun, so the material world is also far away from the spiritual world. The Vedic literature directs us not to be captivated by the dark regions, tamaha, but to try to reach the shining regions of the absolute yogi dharma. Okay. The spiritual world is brightly illuminated, but the material world is wrapped in darkness. 
in the material world sunshine moonshine or different kinds of artificial light are required to dispel darkness especially at night for by nature the material world is dark therefore the supreme lord has arranged for sunshine and moonshine but in his abode as described in the bhagavad gita there is no necessity for lightning by sunshine moonshine or electricity because everything is self effulgent we did discuss about this yesterday proper is again elaborating that in this purport that which is relative temporary and far away from the absolute truth is called maya or ignorance please pay attention now proper is conveying an amazing point here this illusion is exhibited in two ways as explained in the bhagavad gita the inferior illusion is inert matter and the superior illusion is the living entity what is this <laughs> superior illusion is living entity he says how the living entity can be superior illusion any thoughts jiva is jiva illusion prakriti para prakriti now proper himself answer answers this if somebody had read this purport before he will know the answer proper very nicely gives the explanation the living entities are called illusory in this context only because they are implicated in the illusory structures and activities of the material world because he has identified himself with the matter and he is into the hallucination he is he is completely in dream world so this uh, jiva is also com- com- uh, com- compared to the Uh, illusory um, nature that's the point here proper is making actually the living entities are not illusory for they are parts and parcels of the supreme superior energy of the supreme lord and do not have to be covered by maya if they do not want to be so so if we do not want we are not going to be covered by maya see you see the difference here with the amazing thing you know, the difference that you can see is pure devotee wherever he turns left right top bottom down he only sees krishna he only sees his energy So that's a many times we see Prabhupada says there is only one energy. Prabhupada says no, there is only spiritual energy. For whom? For the pure devotee, he can see like that. You are able to understand the point. So now it is up to us. If we want to be, if we want to turn our face away from Maya, then we will see only Krishna. But since we have this independent desire to enjoy separate from the Lord, we are we are influenced by Maya. As simple as that. Okay. Um, the actions of the living entities in the spiritual kingdom are not illusory they are the actual eternal activities of liberated souls okay so that's the whole point so now now this is the whole message of this so we have to understand that the lord is there is is um, maya is there maya is um, maya is a shadow uh, and she doesn't doesn't exist independently and uh, the moment we turn our direction from being trying to be a separate enjoyers to be enjoyed by the lord we are relieved from maya so that's the whole thing and how that is going to happen how one gets a realization that actually he is eternal servant of krishna and he gets happiness real bliss by that understanding of not serving maya but to serve krishna that happens when we develop love for krishna and how do we develop love for krishna there is a process that the supreme personality of god himself has given that is the pure devotional service engagement in pure devotional service at all times at all place and that all those things begins with the chanting of the holy names of the lord which is the ba- fundamental basis fundamental process of the bhakti yoga okay so now we will go to text 35 so so far these first two verses it spoke about which tatva hmm of the three tatvas which tatva is covered sambandha is covered yeah we have so far we have seen the sambandha gyan mm-hmm. now the next verse speaks about the prayojana <laughs> we will see what is that yata mahanti bhutani bhuteshu cha chvasheshanu pravishtanya pravishtani tata teshu na teshvaham o brahma please know that the universal elements enter into the cosmos and at the same time do not enter into the cosmos similarly I myself also exist within everything created, and at the same time, I am outside of everything. Okay, you can uh, from that from that letter that what Shri Prabhupada said. Here is a small information that I have traced out. The human form is a great opportunity for the living entity to understand God, the living entity, time, nature, and different activities. The material activities are temporary. Therefore, if the living entities are trained to transform his activities from material to spiritual. 
he regains his original spiritual nature. So that's the whole point we had. So what is that original spiritual nature? Is the, the eternal servant of Krishna engaged in loving devotional service. Okay. Now we will uh, see the summary of this purport and then we will see commentaries by other acharyas what they are saying. The elements exist outside the cosmos and are used in the universe to construct all things. Similarly, the Lord exists both inside and outside everything. This is the Lord's Achintya Shakti. Like the elements, he is both within and without. So, this is the philosophy of Achintya Veda Veda Tattva, right? He is simultaneously inside and outside, and um, which, is, which is inconceivable, which is by the potency of the Lord it is possible. Okay, here it is. In the developed stage of consciousness, the human being can study both physiological and physical science. But the basic principles of such sciences are nothing but the material elements and nothing more. The body of the human being and the body of the mountain as also the bodies of the demigods including Brahma are all the same ingredients, earth, water, etc. And at the same time the elements are beyond the body. The elements were created first and therefore they entered into the bodily construction later. But in both circumstances they entered the cosmos and also did not enter. Similarly the Supreme Lord by his different energies namely the internal and external is within everything in this manifested cosmos and at the same time he is outside of everything situated in the kingdom of God Vaikuntha Loka as described before hmm? the simple point you know so we can see Prabhupada says the material elements it was there before and again when everything the universes, universes are created it again it entered the all the it, it transformed into different bodies different things that we see in this world, these are all transformations of the Panchabhuta, correct? But then it is separate outside also, so that's why Krishna is giving this example. Hmm? Now we will see what is more, another amazing thing is explained in this verse, okay. We will continue with the purport. The Lord abides in the universe through his plenary expansion, the super soul. This is indeed, this is described in the Brahma Samhita 535 and 37. Prabhupada quotes these two verses. Hmm? I worship the personality of God at Govinda who by expansion of his internal potency of transcendental existence, knowledge and bliss enjoys in his own and expanded forms in Goloka. Simultaneously enters into every atom of the creation. Hmm? The famous verse, Ananda Chinmaya, Rasa Pratibhavita Abhis Thabiriya Eva Nijarupataya Kalami Goloka Eva Nivasat Akilatma Bhuto Govinda Mahadi Purusham Tamahum Bajam. The expansion of his plenary parts is also more definitely explained in the same Brahma Samhita as follows. I worship the personality of God at Govinda who by one of his plenary portions enters into the existence of every universe and every particle of the atoms and thus unlimitedly manifests his infinite energy all over the material creation. So from Brahma Samhita he is showing that the Lord is eternally residing in his abode in Goloka, Vaikuntha, he in various expansions is, re is residing there and simultaneously has entered every atom and he has pervaded himself everywhere. So, proper substantiates that. Because the impersonalists have no devotion, they cannot understand the mystery of how the Lord is both all pervading and simultaneously playing his flute in Goloka Vrindavan. Now, the impersonalists cannot understand this. Prabhupada substantiates their point. Prabhupada says that the vision is the real mystery of spiritual knowledge as stated by the Lord in the beginning of his instructions to Brahmaji. Sarahasyam tadangam cha. So, remember, Prabhupada says that this is, uh, sa, I mean, in the, in the 31st verse we saw, Sarahasyam. What is that Sarahasyam? We said that the uh, pure love, which is, or the prema bhakti, we call it as Sarahasyam. Also, uh, who can understand it? The Lord is simultaneously present in the spiritual abode and he is present in this material world also and he is, he is all pervaded. Only a pure devotee can understand this. So, because this is a confidential thing, you know, not everybody can understand this. And how he is able to perceive that? How he is able to see the presence of the Lord everywhere? Because of the pure un un uh, unanointed love the devotee has for the Lord. And that's why we can see Prabhupada quotes this Premanjana Churita Bhakti, Bhakti Vilochanena in this, in this, okay, right, right there, we are going to read that. This mystery is the most confidential part of the knowledge of the Supreme and it is impossible for the mental speculators to discover it by dint of intellectual gymnastics, Prabhupada says. <laughs> Whatever you may study, you may go through different logic. Sorry sir, you can't. You need the mercy of the Lord and to invoke the mercy of the Lord, you need to surrender to Him. And you need to engage in devotional service and when your, when your eyes are salved with the tinge of love, then you will be able to see the Lord. 
ಪ್ರೇಮಾಂಜನ ಚುರಿತ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವಿಲೋಚನೇನ ಸಂತಸ್ತ ದೈವ ಹೃದಯೇಶು ವಿಲೋಕಯಂತಿ ಎಂ ಶ್ಯಾಮ ಸುಂದರ ಅಚಿಂತ್ಯ ಗುಣಸ್ವರೂಪಂ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಮಾರಿ ಪುರುಷಂ ತಮ ಹಂಗ್ ಭಜಾಮಿ ಐ ವರ್ಷ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಪ್ರಸಾಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಎಟ್ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಹೂಮ್ ದ ಪ್ಯೂರ್ ಡಿವೋಟೀಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಐಸ್ ನಿಯರ್ ವಿತ್ ಆಯಿನ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಲವ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಎಟ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಅಬ್ಸರ್ವ್ ವಿತ್ ಇನ್ ದೇರ್ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಗೋವಿಂದ ದ ಒರಿಜಿನಲ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಎಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಶ್ಯಾಮ ಸುಂದರ ವಿತ್ ಆಲ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸೆಂಡೆಂಟಲ್ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಟೀಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ಒನ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಗೋಪೀಸ್ ದಿ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ so when you appear you appear uh, like as in in what form so he says the lord himself repeats that just you will see uh, 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 to put it in a uh, proper way shri jiva goswami in his commentary says that he says that actually the lord responds saying that yes you will see me as shyam sundara hmm, in this particular as description given in the brahma samhita here as the elements are both outside and within the universe those possessing he have the lord's past times and names which are non different from him televised in their hearts even though his past times also occurred outside in vaikuntha or goloka vrindavana so now prabhupad explains that that the lord can reveal himself to his pure devotees this is a mystery so if we are, when you go through the purport you will see that um, but otherwise it is not possible to see the lord um, see i will just read that particular portion of the purport the man with a poor fund of knowledge cannot understand although by material science one can see things far away by means of television factually the spiritually developed person is able to have the television of the kingdom of god always reflected within the within his heart that is the mystery of knowledge of the personality of god hmm? beautiful proper proper explaining that the lord is all pervading does not mean that he cannot have a personal form now this is again another point uh, this is where the impersonal is stuck but the form can only be seen by those who possess prema bhakti love for krishna krishna rarely bestows prema on anyone the proper makes this point that because the, we say that the lord is everywhere so that doesn't mean that does not have a form maya tatam idam sarvam jagat avyakta murtina matstani sarva bhutani nachaham tesh vavasthitah krishna very clearly says that you know i am i am everywhere at the same time i am independent as well i am indi- i have my own personal form and i am in my own abode so this is the achintya bheda by the by the transformation of energies the lord is spread everywhere now propal here in the continuing the purport says thus love of god had developed in the heart of the devotee is a great mystery brahma ji previously told narada that narada that the desires of brahma ji are never unfulfilled because he is always absorbed in the transcendental loving service of the lord nor has he any desire in his heart save and accept the transcendental service of the lord that is the beauty and mystery of the process of bhakti yoga as the lord's desire is infallible because he is achyuta similarly the desires of the de- of, of the devotees in the transcendental service of the lord are also achyuta infallible so that's the thing because when a devotee exhibits uh, pure affection for the lord and he expresses love for the lord the lord will satisfy all the desires of his devotees that's why proper is making this point the lord never fails to protect his devotees that is also another meaning for achyuta you remember that when we read the bhagavad gita the first chapter one of the translation says huh? so yeah in that way the lord is infallible out of all kinds of perfection are attained by the process of knowledge yoga perfection and devotional service is the highest of all the most mysterious also of all and the most mysterious also even more mysterious than the eight kinds of mystic perfection attained by the process of yogic performances so probably there is lot of quotes to sub- substantiate that point that bhakti is superior wonderful and mysterious bhakti yoga may be received uh, and understood only through the chain of disciplic succession as shila prabhupada states to conclude this purport now um we can see here in this purport process is so how to you one can develop that pure love one can become fortunate when he accepts the instructions of the lord coming in the parampara if one is fortunate enough to have received the knowledge in the transcendental disciplic succession surely he will have the chance to understand the mystery of the lord and that of the shrimad bhagavatam the sound incarnation of the lord okay here are some comments from from burijan prabhu uh, and also is referring to the sandarbhas of shila jiva goswami i'll just go through that this verse which hints at prema bhakti indirectly describes the rahasyam the bhagavatam's great secret in shrimad bhagavatam is a famous i already I already discussed we discussed you about this that many times the lord says uh, parokshavada he likes indirect descriptions 
where as there are many times you can see there are indirect descriptions. In this verse, this Prema Bhakti, the pure love of Krishna is indirectly shown. He didn't directly say this. Hmm? We will see how it is. Sri Krishna tells Uddhava that the Vedas reveal truth in an esoteric, indirect fashion and that he himself is pleased by this mode of description. Thus Krishna has also spoken to Brahma the highest truth but he has spoken it indirectly. In the Bhagavad Sandarbha, Sri Jiva Goswami describes how this verse speaks of Prema Bhakti. Without pure love, one cannot actually give up Maya. This we discussed yesterday, right? It is not possible. Krishna then explains the confidentiality of that pure love. The universal elements enter into the cosmos and at the same time do not enter into the cosmos. Similarly, I myself also exist within everything created and at the same time I am outside of everything. As the principal elements of creation simultaneously remain outside created beings and still appear to have entered and are present in them, so also I, even though I have not entered this universe being situated in Vaikuntha, appear to have entered and I am present in the hearts of the surrendered persons. Here the confidential essence is hinted at pure loving devotion which brings the supreme soul under control and causes, causes him to enter and be active in a soul's heart. The Lord is personally present with to for whom? For his pure devotee. Now we will see also Vishnu Chakravita commentary, he adds some more things. So the Lord says, I am manifest to my devotees inside in the activity of their minds and outside in the activity of the senses due to their possessing their rahasya. So what is that rahasya? Possessing what? What they are possessing? Love for God. That's the whole point. This confidential essence, rahasya, is self-illuminating prema bhakti which is composed of pure ecstasy. Because of their possessing this, my devotees perform no other activity. Thus, Brahma has said, O Narada, because I have caught hold of the lotus feet of the Supreme Person of God at Hari, with great zeal, whatever I say has never proved to have been false. Do you remember this? In the 6th chapter, in my famous verse. Nor is the progress of my mind ever deterred, nor are my senses ever degraded by temporary attachment to matter. So that means what, when Brahma is saying this, can you realize what has happened? When Brahma spoke this, that means already he had followed the process as Krishna had instructed. He went on, uh, he, uh, he went on uh, performing the creation. He followed strictly and carefully the instructions given by the Lord. And as a, what was the result of that? He was not carried away by pride. He was not carried away by um, uh, by the influence of the the Rajoguna. He was protected by the Lord as the Lord gave promise. So that is why he is speaking this to Narada. You understand? Okay. There might be contention against explanation according to some other interpretation of the four verse Bhagavatam, but Sri Sri Jiva Goswami says, but the actual purport of the verses is only found in this explanation. So that's the thing. And we already read Srila Prabhupada's commentary where he quotes again the same thing that Prema Bhakti uh, can be developed when one is. Uh, when one develops the prema, when the eyes are not red with love. Okay, then some more information. Sri Yoga Goswami says, Ordinary matters of, the, of this world are meant to cover and divert the eyes of evil and uninterested people from this. It is like a chintamani gem hidden in a box. Thus the personality of Godhead has said, The Vedic seers deal in esoteric terms and I also am pleased by such confidential descriptions. Something is kept esoteric. Esoteric means kind of a secret. When it is a precious, precious item, scarcely available and not to be given away. This has been described in many statements such as he sometimes bestows liberation but hardly ever pure devotion. We have heard this, right? The Lord will not give this pure devotion so easily. The personality of God himself has also said this in his own words to his best devotees, Arjuna and Uddhava, in such statements as because you are my very dear friend, uh, I am speaking to you my supreme instruction, the most confidential knowledge of all. Hear from me, hear from me, for it is for your benefit. Now this example what I read about Chintamani, that it is like when Chintamani is covered in a box, Prabhupada also says in the purport, I didn't read that, you can do it as a homework, please go through the purport, you can see Prabhupada is quoting the same uh, point of the previous Acharyas. Now we will see Vishnu Chakravarta's commentary on this verse. Just as the elements enter into all beings and also remain separate, I enter into all beings and remain separate when I perform my pastimes. In past times related to the material world, I remain detached and in past times related to devotees, I am attached. This is a translation of this verse by Shri Vishnu Thakur and we will see his commentary. Having described Maya and Yoga Maya, 
by taking two meanings to the previous verse the lord now describes how he performs past times in the material and spiritual worlds which are subject to maya and yoga maya respectively this answers brahma's question in verse 28 so he asked about the two mayas the lord has answered and now is the explanation just as the elements such as ether enter into the living being such as devatas men and animals men and animals since they are acquired by the jeevas and at the same time do not enter into them since they maintain a separate existence this all, we already we heard this i also enter into the elements and the living beings and also do not enter into them remaining separately in my abode which is shuddha sattva we heard this point now further the entrance of the elements into the living beings is without attachment since the elements are not conscious correct it is it's not it's it's achit like the ether though i am conscious like a man who lives in his house without attachment i remain without attachment while entering regulating and protecting all beings my past times are without attachment in relation to the elements and the living beings within the material world any gita verse you remember immediately for this immediately you should be able to remember this the lord is neutral okay i am giving another hint the lord is neutral samoham sarva bhuteshu namedveshu stina priya e bhajante tu maam bhaktya mai de teshu chapyam so the lord is sitting inside as paramatma just as a witness he is doing his duty but he is not having he is not attached to anything but you see that lord who is atma rama who is apta kama what happens to him but i desire to show myself to my obedient devotees who have entered my heart who have perfected themselves and bowed to me remaining separate not entering their hearts i desire to offer my beauty to their eyes i desire that my fragrance enters their nostrils and desire to fill their ears with the nectar of my sweet voice speaking with the speaking with them and answering them i desire to make their limbs experience the sweet softness of my body by touching and embracing them <laughs> see what the lord does thus situated inside my devotees and externally as well i perform past times with great attachment for my pure devotees beyond the gunas whom i cannot cure now it is amazing there is one commentary i just missed now i will read that prabhupada in the adi lila for the commentary the same verse he is covering these points we will see that as you see in the purport uh, to the to this verse prabhupada speak spoke about that how we can develop this we have to submit ourselves to the spiritual master he says he gives a hint right we saw that now in similar thing he speaks about it in his commentary on the on the chaitanya charitamrita he had some more points there the personality of god in his all pervading feature of paramatma enters every entity from the biggest to the most minute he is existence can be realized by one who has a single qualification of submissiveness and who thereby becomes surrendered soul the development of submissiveness is the cause of proportionate spiritual realization by which one can ultimately meet the supreme lord in person as a man meets another man face to face so he is here speaking about the qualification required now because of his development of transcendental attachment for the supreme lord the surrendered soul feels the presence of his beloved everywhere and on all his senses are engaged in the loving service of the lord his eyes are engaged in seeing the beautiful couple shri radha and krishna sitting on a decorated throne beneath a desired tree in the transcendental land of vrindavan His eye, his nose is engaged in smelling the spiritual aroma of the lotus feet of the Lord. Similarly, his ears are engaged in hearing messages from Vaikuntha, and his hands embrace the lotus feet of the Lord and his associates. Thus, the Lord is manifested to a pure devotee from within and without. This is one of the mysteries of the devotional relationship in which a devotee and the Lord are bound by a tie of spontaneous love. To achieve this love should be the goal of life of every living being. amazing ah huh? so now we can see here that um, uh, pure devotees they could have this vision we is just to remind you when the, when we saw the first verse of, of the bhagavatam first canto first verse when we saw the commentary of shri rajiva goswami i mean all great acharyas are giving some commentaries but again the point is that they are able to see the lord in person so when they look at the verse when they 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 are uh, they are just seeing radha krishna but we ourselves in our condition state we will be uh, uh, we see, uh, to the degree we are purified to that degree we will be able to perceive things we will be able to see things the other day we were we were hearing when there is a screen in front of us what we can see we are bound we are limited you know think about it there is a small ant here this small ant what is ant can know about the teacher and students sitting in this room 
and uh, length and breadth of this room what and what is the perception the ant has even if somebody goes and preaches to the ant in its language and says that you know what you are in this place you are, what are you what are you just blabbering it will say he cannot understand anything the ant cannot understand anything that's our situation in this material world we are covered by maya we are very very insignificant and uh, but by when we are empowered by the lord when we are when we get the mercy of the lord then we will be able to uh, have this vision of the supreme lord see now these verses the next verse text 36 is gives us the um, um gives us the process by which we can develop that love for god uh, and also when we develop the love for god we get the realization of the difference between the uh, yoga maya and maha maya and we can able to see krishna is the controller of the maya and uh, we will be completely freed from maya so this verse is of great relevance for for us etavad eva jignasyam tatva jignasu natmanah anvaya vyatirekyabhyam yat syat sarvatra sarvada a person who is searching after the supreme absolute truth the personality of god it must certainly search for it up to this in all circumstances in all space and time and both directly and indirectly so this again this verse is again a similar message for bhagavatam it urges us it pushes us what is it that you are doing in your life you fool don't waste your time you have to search for this search for what search for that topmost perfection to be attained which can one that is the only thing which can satisfy the supreme lord and the unsatisfaction can happen to the jiva as well so that's why it said at all times and all places we should always be ready to uh develop this few love or whatever is required to be done for that we have to do okay so this verse also hints at the practice of sadhana bhakti isn't it every person at all times and places should inquire and progress until they come to the point of love of krishna that's what proper begins the purport with there are various processes are there uh, and all these processes are meant to develop self realization and of that various um, situations proper also explains in the in the first two paragraphs then proper goes on to explain people do not understand either the process of bhakti or its goal vishnu or krishna because they are entangled in the material world and interested only in sense gratification so proper says that yes that is a problem the problem is people do are uh, they don't understand what is the pro- proper process to take up they are rather some of them they, they do not even inquire if at all there is an inquiry also the in- after the inquiry they do not know what is the perfect process to follow so there is no inquiry one and if at all there is inquiry they do not know what is the proper process to follow why because they are carried away by the influence of maya and what is the primary binding for us by the influence of maya the sex desire yeah. you can see proper speaks that in the purport then we should inquire about the absolute truth through disciplic succession yes i am just reminding you i have just put these texts as sutras hmm. that uh, that ex- elaborates one paragraph two paragraphs that what proper is explaining <coughs> so proper says that now why is that inquiry somebody may have some inquiry hmm? and after that little inquiry arises if you want to find answers for those inquiries you have to go through proper disciplic succession then you will come to know about the absolute truth that's what proper is explaining the proper in the purport is making one point i just like to share with you although everyone is free to consult the revealed scriptures in this connection one still requires the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master and that is the direction in this verse so this is a key point also in this verse so unless you you approach a bona fide spiritual master because he is connected sir he is connected with the supreme lord he is already imbued in love of god so you have only from him you can get otherwise it is not possible so prabhupada goes on to explain the importance of the bona fide spiritual master disciplic succession and um, how only a sincere student can uh, take up the service of the lord bewildered by, by maya people cannot see the truth even when it is presented in shastras such as the bhagavad gita this is because they lack a bona fide guru's guidance now the same point i just added as a elaborated because again proper is explaining because they are, if you approach the this truth through a bona fide spiritual master you will be able to understand it by his mercy 
But when you don't, you will never be able to understand being influenced by Maya. The Prabhupada speaks about that further down, down the line. So now Prabhupada further explains, now the, the purpose of the human life is about um, to find out the truth that we are eternal servant of Krishna, we develop love for Krishna. Now Prabhupada speaks about the purpose of Varnashrama, to organize society in such a way that everyone serves the Lord. The advancements of contemporary society are nullified, considering considered only decorations on a dead body, because neither the citizens nor the leaders know the goal of life or how to achieve it. Now this is another important thing. Now the whole society is geared towards sense gratification. Now the society has to be set up in such a way so that we will be able to gear ourselves towards that goal of developing love for Krishna. So how do we do that? The Lord himself has given a system. If we take up the process of that system, then it is possible. So Prabhupada speaks about Brahmanas, Vaishyas, Kshatriyas, Shudras and how everybody has to take up their roles. Okay. Now Prabhupada, in the conclusion of that particular paragraph, he says, Therefore, all advancement of knowledge in the present context of things is being misused by cats and dogs fighting with one another for sense gratification. And all acquisition of knowledge in science, philosophy, fine arts, nationalism, economic development, religion and great activities are being spoiled by using, by being used as dresses for dead men. Now this is the point. Now what is happening is, when there is no clear discrimination in the society, the society when it is, um, when the society is, um, instead of being God centered, it is, it is centered on the satisfaction of the senses, then there is immediate, immediately there is quarrel, immediately there is envy, immediately there is greed and there is such a misunderstanding in the, in the society. And Prabhupada says that what is the use of so many different designations? All these designations are like dresses used for covering a coffin of a dead body. Prabhupada is really giving <laughs> a strong dose here and that's what, that's true, that's all. Um, what is the use of so many different uh, degrees, different positions, different pose, different um, responsibilities you have in a society. It is just useless, Prabhupada speaks about that point. Okay, so Prabhupada is speaking that. So that is why the Varnashrama, if you, if the society is set up according to Varnashrama, that will help us to gear our goal towards serving Krishna. That's the need of Varnashrama, that's why. Otherwise, society becomes chaos. Okay, the ultimate goal of life is to attain love for Krishna. Failing to acquire that by practicing Bhakti Yoga, one continues in the cycle of birth and death because matter overwhelms the mind. To, to become free, one must absorb the mind in Vasudeva. So now Prabhupada comes to the same point that now what happens when there is a chaotic situation of trying to satisfy the senses, then the society is just completely overwhelmed. The, all the men in the society, women in the society, they are overwhelmed by the pulling of the mind and senses. Then the object of love, Vasudeva, Krishna, we forget. That Prabhupada discusses. So Prabhupada, he stresses the point that one, to develop the love for Krishna, one has to uh, engage in devotional service. Now, we can see in this purport, again from the letter, I have just added uh, the text here. And after such achievements, he is promoted to the spiritual world, which is far beyond his visible material sky. All these understandings are based on authentic Vedic knowledge. In the letter, Prabhupada is saying this. <laughs> so, authentic Vedic knowledge, authentic Vedic knowledge means, how the Vedic knowledge we can be, could be authentic for you. Vedic knowledge is authentic. But how you will receive it in an authentic way? You have to follow the parampara. Prabhupada already spoke about that. You have to hear from the spiritual master. See how everything is condensed in that small letter. <laughs> Prabhupada wrote. So here, Srila Prabhupada is quoting the famous verse. Uh, Parabhava stavada bhoda jato yavanna jignyasata atma tattvam yavat kriya stavad idang manovai karmatmakam yena sharira bhandaha As long as one is blind to inquiring after self-realization, all material activities, however great they may be, are all different kinds of defeat because the aim of human life is not fulfilled by such unwanted and profitless activities. The function of the human body is to attain freedom from material bondage. But as long as one is fully absorbed in material activities, his mind will be overwhelmed in the whirlpool of matter. Thus he will continue to be engaged in material bodies, life after life. So this is the point. The point is that as long as you are going to be engaged in sinful activities, your senses are going to be uh, more and senses and mind will be more and more covered. More and more we are impure, we will never be able to um, get, into the, get into the subtleties of the spiritual life. We will be blocked, we are stunted. Huh? Very, uh, Maharaj in one class very nicely said, our, the knowledge is slanted, the realization is slanted, 
uh, not is not uh, sorry stunted stunted means you are you it's blocked <laughs> you you can't see another one person i am able to see i am not able to see anything you you are not able to see because you are not sufficiently purified when we are not sufficiently purified you may go on the hit against the wall sorry you can't see <laughs> the door has to open and there is a the door opens hmm? those who knock at the door the door opens all we have to do is we are just we have to knock at the door at that knocking we are not doing we are knocking somewhere else are you able to follow okay we just knock knock at the door by chanting hare krishna hare krishna krishna krishna, 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 krishna hare 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 rama hare rama rama rama, rama hare hare then the door will open hmm? evam mana karma vasam prayunte avidhyatman upadhiyamane प्रीतिर्नयावन मई वासुदेव न मुच्यते देह योगे न तावत इट इज वंस माइंड दैट जनरेट्स डिफरेंट काइंड्स ऑफ बॉडीज फॉर सफरिंग डिफरेंट काइंड्स ऑफ मटेरियल पैंट्स देयरफॉर एज लॉन्ग एज द माइंड इज अब्सॉर्ब्ड इन ट्रूडिव एक्टिविटीज द माइंड इज अंडरस्टूड टू बी अब्सॉर्ब्ड इन नेसेंस एंड दस वन इज श्योर टू बी सब्जेक्टेड टू मटेरियल बॉन्डेज इन डिफरेंट बॉडीज अगेन एंड अगेन अंटिल वन डेवलप्स ट्रांसेंडेंटल लव ऑफ गॉड एंड वासुदेव द सुप्रीम पर्सन टू बिकम अब्सॉर्ब्ड इन ट्रांसेंडेंटल नेम क्वालिटीज फॉर्म एंड एक्टिविटीज ऑफ द सुप्रीम पर्सन वासुदेव Asadeva means to change the temper of the mind from matter to absolute knowledge, which leads one to the path of absolute realization, and thus frees one from the bondage of material contact and engagements in different material bodies. Here, yeah, basically, Prabhupada is saying that one has to um, stop the sense gratification and one has to engage in trying to gratify the senses of the Lord, which is, means we have to engage in bhakti. Everyone, therefore, has the right to take to devotional service and attain the highest goal. And everyone should do so under proper guidance. Sincerity is the only qualification. Prabhupada amazingly puts that everyone has got the opportunity. In this, in this rest of the purport, Prabhupada analyzes amazingly. Uh, he is giving, he is giving us hints. So this bhakti, everyone can take up this bhakti. There is no, there is no prior qualification required. Uh, there is no big status required. You don't, you don't have to have any big education. anybody from any background can take up so what is the key for that sincerity that's the only thing that is required in one letter prabhupad says to make advancement in krishna consciousness two things are important he says seriousness and sincerity this is the key for progress he says so there are a lot of quotes supporting this um you can go through that there is no obstacle to performing devotional service krishna can be served with even the most common ingredients Shri Prabhupada offers many shastri quotations that directly indicate that the Lord should be served in all cases and at all times. One after the other, he gives various quotes from the Bhagavatam to to explain directly that if one has to engage in the service of the Lord, huh? he gives direct quotations that you can see, and then Prabhupada says the sincere earnestness is the only qualification that can lead one to the highest perfectional stage of life. and unless and until such real earnestness is aroused there is a difference between cleanliness or uncleanliness learning or non learning in the material estimation fire is always fire and thus if someone touches the fire knowingly or unknowingly the fire will act in its own way without discrimination the principle is hari harati papani dushta chittai api smritah the all powerful lord can purify the devotee of all sinful reactions just as the sun can sterilize all sorts of infections by its powerful rays so this is an amazing point so probably stressing the power of this bhakti power of the lord's mercy how he can purify everyone already we saw in the second canto fourth chapter wherein the power of the lord is explained huh? um what is that verse how does it go kirata hunandra can you somebody chant yeah. किराट हुनांद्र पुलकश पुलिंद पुलकश आभीर शंभा यवना यवनक कसादय दिस ऑल द ग्रेट द डिफरेंट काइंड्स ऑफ लोअर ग्रेड्स ऑफ पीपल बीइंग एक्सप्लेन इन द भागवतम सुदेव गोस्वामी सेज दैट इवन पीपल फ्रॉम दिस काइंड्स ऑफ बैकग्राउंड दे दे कैन बी सेव्ड सो हाउ दे आर सेव्ड व्हेन दे टेक शेल्टर ऑफ द प्योर डिवोटीज ऑफ द लॉर्ड बिकॉज़ दीस डिवोटीज ऑफ द लॉर्ड आर हैव टेकन शेल्टर ऑफ द so all powerful supreme lord ha huh? um shudhyanti yasmai prabha vishnave namaha ha huh? shudhyanti tasmai prabha vishnave namaha so this is the this is the verse which explains it so prabha says again simply by hearing and chanting one becomes a great devotee of lord vasudeva na chalati bhagavat 
पदार विंदा लवनिमी शारदं अपिय स वैष्णवाग्रह या पर्सन हु डज नॉट मूव फ्रॉम द लोटस फीट ऑफ द लॉर्ड इवन फॉर अ मोमेंट इज बी कंसीडर्ड द ग्रेटेस्ट ऑफ ऑल वैष्णवस भगवत पार्षदा पार्षदतां प्राप्ते मत सेवया प्रतीतं ते द प्यूर डिवोटीज आर कन्विंस्ड ऑफ अटेनिंग द एसोसिएशन ऑफ द पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉड एंड दस दे आर ऑलवेज एंगेज इन द ट्रांसेंडेंटल लविंग सर्विस ऑफ द लॉर्ड so now we can see also in this verse this example is given of the sun which can purify even the place where there is stool and urine so even if we are very low class doesn't matter if we come in touch with the lord the lord will purify all our uh, bad situations and whatever bad backgrounds or bad thoughts the lord is very powerful we have we have to be, we have we need to have the faith in the lord that he can purify us so many verses proper quotes uh, in direct Uh, relation about the glorification of the lord so you can go through that uh, one verse i will just share it with you which is a very famous one which is a nice verse you might have heard about this sahanistan mahachidram samoha sacha vibramah yan muhurtam kshanam vapi vasudevam na chintayet if even for a moment remembrance of vasudeva supreme person of god it is missed that is the greatest loss that is the greatest illusion and, and that is the greatest anomaly oh, that's very nice huh so the, what is the greatest delusion not thinking about the lord what is the greatest loss not thinking about the lord what is the greatest fault not thinking about the lord now that's why a pure devotee doesn't waste time avyakta hmm? kalatvam every second is using it in the service of the lord okay the lord should be worshiped with devotion in all the stages of life even in childhood and in all places this is again another interesting thing so so when do we start devotion anyway already in the beginning of the bhagavatam Uh, uh, very clearly, Shukadeva Goswami sets the sets the theme. He clearly explains. Ahai toki apprati hata, ayatma suprasi dati. Without any motivation and without any interruption of time, it should just the service should go on. And so, when to start? So, sir, can you tell tell me an auspicious time? When can I start practicing? Right now, right now, sir. <laughs> Immediately. Don't waste time. You are, you are fully qualified to take the mercy of the Lord. Please surrender yourself. So, Prabhupada gives nice examples of Pralad Maharaj, Parikshit, how they in the womb they got to know about the uh, mercy of the Lord. And the youth, Prabhupada gives example of Ambrish Maharaj, and again as an young boy, Prabhupada gives example of Durva Samuni. So, uh, and also Prabhupada says that even when somebody is in the hell, he could be saved by chanting the names of the Lord. Mucheta yennam yudite narakopi. Simply by chanting the holy name of the Lord, the inhabitants of hell became released from their hellish persecution. The conclusion of Shrimad Bhagavatam presented by Shukadeva Goswami to Maharaj Parikshit is that everyone should chant the holy name of the Lord fearlessly to achieve the desired success in their in their pursuits. Hmm? So this is a famous verse which we read: "Eta nirvidya mana nam icha tam akuto bhayam yogi nam nirpa nirni tam hare nama nu kirtan." One O oh King, it is finally decided that everyone, namely those in the renounced order of life, the mystics, and the enjoyers of the fruity work. Should chant the holy name of the Lord fearlessly to achieve the desired success in their pursuits. So Prabhupada again gives uh, further quotations. We saw the quotations, direct quotations, uh, and then there are also some quotations Prabhupada gives indirectly. Uh, because in the verse it is said that directly or indirectly, somehow or other you have to develop love for God. You have to endeavor in that process. So he is giving both the quotes. Through further quotations, Sri La Prabhupada demonstrates that Shastra demonstrates that Shastra also indirectly uh, indicates that everyone should take to Bhakti Yoga, and we can see from Garuda Purana, Brihanarade Purana, from Bhagavatam itself, Prabhupada gives so many quotes. We'll go through that. So Prabhupada says the final conclusion is that we should always hear, chant, and proclaim the Lord's glories. We should not adopt any other method of advancement. The best and guaranteed path of progress is therefore. Engagement in bhakti yoga, pure devotional service. The final conclusion, therefore, is that the glories of the Lord must be always and everywhere proclaimed. One should hear about His glories, one should chant about His glories, and one should always remember His glories because that is the highest perfectional stage of life. As far as fruity work is concerned, it is limited to an enjoyable body. As far as yoga is concerned, it is limited to the acquirement of mystic power. As far as empiric philosophy is concerned, it is limited to the attainment of transcendental knowledge. and as far as transcendental knowledge is concerned it is limited to the attainment of salvation even if they are adopted there is every chance of discrepancies in discharging the particular type of functions but adoption of the transcendental devotional service of the lord 
has no limit nor is there fear of falling down pratipadam purnamrata swadanam right shri chaitanya mahaprabhu says in shri shastaka every step there is ha uh, anandam uh, budivardanam there is no limit it is just ever expanding because the lord is ever expanding the lord is unlimited is the devotional service of the lord is also unlimited so bhakti yoga is superior the process automatically reaches the final stage by the grace of the lord in the preliminary stage of devotional service there is an apparent requisite for knowledge but in the higher stage there is no necessity of such knowledge the best and guaranteed path of progress is therefore engagement in bhakti yoga pure devotional service social proper very clearly establishes that the proper while con- about to c- conclude this part but he says that this cream of this bhagavatam is accessible only for the devotees impersonalists are unable to access either the goal or the process okay um so proper is is quoting this famous verse how only by the mercy of the lord things will be revealed so he says from the kata upanishad nayam atma pravachena pravachanena labhyo namedaya na bahuna shrutena yame vaishya vrunute te na labhyas tasyaisha atma vibrunute tanum swam the whole matter is explained by the lord himself and one who has no approach to the lord in his personal feature the impersonalist can rarely understand the purport of the shrimad bhagavatam without being taught by the bhagavatas in the disciplic succession shri vishnu chakravarti tatpur by concluding this commentary for this four verses he says that so let me again tell you <laughs> that this is for i have this work is for the devotees not for others cannot understand this to so proper also concludes that so from these four verses so we get to know about the sambandha abhidaya and the prayojana and then the sambandha aspect we get the, the knowledge and the realized knowledge and then from the abhidaya process um, we get to know that we have to engage in sadhana bhakti process by which starts with the chanting of the holy name of the lord and that will lead us to the pure love of god uh, which is the prayojana text 37 एतन्मत सतिष्ट परमेण सीना भवान्कलपिकलु न विमुह्यति कर्चि सो इन दिस वर्ड लॉर्ड इज गिविंग इन द अशूरेंस दट यू विल नॉट बी बिल्ड सो इस ओ ब्रह्म जस्ट फॉलो दिस कंक्लूशन बै फिस्ड कॉन्सट्रेशन ऑफ मैंड एंड नो प्राइड विल डिस्टर्ब यू नीदर इन दि पार्शियल नॉर् इन दि फाइनल डिवास्टेशन So, Prabhupada says, as in the Bhagavad Gita, 10th chapter, where the personality of God and Lord Krishna has summarized the whole text in four verses, namely Aham Sarvasya Prabhava, etc. So, the complete Srimad Bhagavadam has also been summarized in four verses as Aham Eva Sam Eva Gre, etc. Thus, the secret purpose of the most important Bhagavatai conclusion is explained by the original speaker of the Srimad Bhagavadam, who was also the original speaker of the bhagavad gita the personality of god had <laughs> proper immediately says in the beginning of this purport uh, the personality of god had lord sri krishna the bona fide spiritual master by his personal activities teaches the disciple teaches the disciple the principles of devotional service without personal service one would go on speculating like the impersonalists and dry speculators life after life and would be unable to reach the final conclusion by following the instructions of the bona fide spiritual master in conjunction with the principles of revealed scriptures the student will rise to the plane of complete knowledge which will be exhibited by the development of detachment from the world of sense gratification so how do we know that the student has made progress we will know because simultaneously he develops detachment from the matter that is the test so what is the test of advancement someone has made in the practice of spiritual life we can see there is a there is a increase uh, for affection for chanting the names of the lord hearing hari katha uh, and simultaneously we can see that the material desires are the, the, the desire to enjoy independence of the lord has reduced so the more, to the degree one develops attachment to the holy name and service of the lord to that degree is attachment to the matter will reduce so that's what prabhu is pointing out so what is the point being made here the point is that because brahma if he is going to hear the instructions of the lord and he is going to strict strict to the instructions of the lord and with careful attention if he follows those instructions the lord says that pride will not touch you you will not be you will not be guided away by any mohan brahma just stick to what i have told you everything will be fine for you so krishna is giving this insurance so now krishna is giving this assurance now who is the spiritual master here 
ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಜಗದ್ ಗುರು ಆರ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಆದಿ ಗುರು ಹಿ ಆಸ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಅಂಡ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಇಫ್ ಇಸ್ಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ಟು ದ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ದೆನ್ ಅಬ್ಸಲ್ಯೂಟ್ಲಿ ನೋ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಟು ವರಿ ಒನ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ಸ್ ಫಿಕ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಡಿವೋಷನ್ ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ then what happens it becomes detached from the matter so in that stage of full satisfaction detachment from the sensory world one can know the mystery of the science of god with all its confidential intricacies and not by grammar or academic speculation because brahma qualified himself for such reception the lord was pleased to disclose the purpose of the shrimad bhagavatam now this is another key point why the lord disclosed shrimad bhagavatam why the lord revealed the shrimad bhagavatam the lord revealed the shrimad bhagavatam because brahma very submissively was ready to hear the instructions of the lord hmm? so because he was detached from this world of sense gratification the lord imparted this knowledge he gave him the intelligence to understand he gave him the strength to um, digest this knowledge that what the lord has given now proper is quoting tesham sarva yuktanam bhajatam priti purvakam dadami buddhi yogam tam yenamam upayanti upayanti te and the devotees who are constantly engaged in the lord's transcendental loving service priti purvakam the lord out of his costless mercy upon the devotee gives direct instruction so that the devotee may make accurate progress on the path returning home back to god and one should not therefore try to understand these four verses of the shrimad bhagavatam by mental speculation rather by direct perception of the supreme personality of god and one is able to know all about his abode vaikuntha as was seen and experienced by brahma ji such vaikuntha realization is possible by any devotee of the lord situated in the transcendental position as a result of devotional service now shri prabhupad is pointing out that how actually krishna is a speaker of the bhagavatam in the gopal tapani upanishad shruti it is said gopavesho me purusha purusha purastad avir babhuva babhuva the lord appeared before brahma as a cowherd boy that is as the original personality of god and lord sri krishna govinda who is later described by brahma ji in the in his brahma samhita so brahma spoke after seeing the taking darshan of the lord after the lord showering his mercy the lord immediately glorified krishna and whom did he glorify krishna supreme personality of god and what did he see that is me explained here chintamani prakara sadma sukalpa priksha lakshavrutesh surabhir abipalayantam lakshmi sahasra shata sambrama sevyamanam Govinda Mahadi Purusham Tamaham Bajami Brahma Ji desires to worship the original personality of God and Lord Sri Krishna who resides in the topmost Vaikuntha planet known as the Goloka Vrindavana where he is in the habit of keeping Surabhi cows as a cowherd boy and where he is served by hundreds and thousands of goddesses of fortune the gopis with love and respect therefore Lord Sri Krishna is the original form of the Supreme Lord Krishna is to Bhagavan Swayam this is also clear from the instruction Lord Krishna gives in the verses 33 to 36 of this chapter the supreme personality of god it is lord krishna and not directly narayana or the purusha avatars which are subsequent manifestations therefore shrimad bhagavatam means consciousness of the supreme personality of god it lord sri krishna and shrimad bhagavatam is a sound representation of the lord as much as the bhagavad gita is thus the conclusion is that shrimad bhagavatam is a science of the lord in which the lord and his abode are perfectly realized so very clearly we understand that um, the lord spoke this chatur shloki verses to brahma and the lord, and after uh, it was spoken and we can also see in the brahma samhita the lord gives further knowledge uh, in, after brahma offers all and the entire praise in 5 6 verses there are glorification that the lord gives assurance to brahma to how he should stick to this pure devotional service and by that he will be able to engage in the creation without being contaminated and uh, we also see that this uh, if somebody gives oral reception to this shrimad bhagavatam whatever knowledge and whatever uh, mercy that brahma received he will also be able to receive it in parampara so, so that's why uh, the study of shrimad bhagavatam and hearing shrimad bhagavatam regularly na nityam bhagavata seva is very important for us now we will just see what shila vishnu chakravarti thakur has got to say here How is it possible for me to understand the deep meaning of these four verses summarizing the Bhagavatam? There are many opinions among those who argue, undertake my directions completely, Krishna says. <laughs> many people will say so many things, but you please listen to what I say. Samatishta, this means contemplate this with concentration. In the Mahakalpa lasting your lifetime and its subdivisions, 
vikalpeshu you will not be bewildered at any time so what do you understand from this here is that because brahma has to do this creation again and again right it's not that one time he has done it and he can just sit and then sleep no because uh, at the end of the day there is always there is a pralaya correct so he has to deal with all those things so but, but you just be engaged in my service you will never be carried away krishna gives his assurance hmm? so uh, okay so uh, this is what i explained to you so he says after uh, commenting vishnu chakravarti says here is the commentary on these four verses this sarartha darshini commentary written for the benefit of all humanity should be seen by persons studying devotional literature and not others <laughs> others there could be so there could be so many scholars they could you know do an analysis of this chatur shloki uh, they will preserve this commentaries of vishnu chakravarti kur baladevi devotional madhvacharya so many people they will preserve it Uh, for the sake of preserving he is another scholar oh nice presentation they will say all this thing but in their own life will they accept krishna supreme person of god will they follow the instructions given by the lord no they will not do that they are the very great scholars that's all and for them krishna will be far away from them no way they can come approach him bhaktyam avi janati otherwise it's impossible <coughs> that's why we can see the, so the brahmana in the sri rangam who had some hardly any knowledge, uh, sanskrit knowledge he had uh, but he was imbued with pure devotion and he was able to see krishna and he touched the bhagavad gita and tried to follow the instruction the spiritual master had given he was able to see krishna personally chaitanya mahaprabhu said that you are the greatest devotee this is a key key factor here okay so now we will go get into the next division of this verses <coughs> lord departs now after saying this the lord lord says okay uh, he disappears from the scene and uh, now lord brahma uh, being very inspired after hearing these instructions he also gives this knowledge to narada muni because narada muni is we will see narada muni is being the sincere servant of the lord uh, he uh, he was very much inspired to know about this dealings of the workings of maya and the lord's position and the pure devotion and uh, also narada muni in turns gave in turn gave his knowledge to vyasadev so in this way shrimad bhagavatam was revealed and it is further expanded we will see that text 38 shri shuka uvacha sampradishyaiva majano jananam parameshtinam pashyatas tasya tad rupam atmanonyan atmanon yarunadharihi Shukadeva Goswami said to Maharaj Parishi, the Supreme Personality of God at Hari, after being seen in his transcendental form, instructing Brahma Ji, the leader of the living entities disappeared. So in this verse, Prabhupada discusses the various names of the Lord, which is mentioned here: Ajana, uh, uh, Atmano Rupam. He discusses all those things. So main point from this verse, uh, we we could understand that uh, that the Lord. Gave the mercy and then he further disappeared. Okay, we we'll go to the next verse. Han antar hitendri artha ya haraye vihitan jalihi sarva bhutama yo vishvam sasarjedam sapurvavat. On the disappearance of the supreme person of God at Hari, who is the object of transcendental enjoyment for the senses. Brahma with folded hands began to recreate the universe full with living entities as it was previously so he was very <laughs> humble brahma became very humble and uh, he was humble and he became further humble after seeing the audience of the lord and hearing this transcendental message and he engaged in the creation the supreme personality of god at hari is the object for fulfilling fulfilling the uh, senses of the all the living entities because that word is perfectly said here Indriya Arthaya. That's the word. You know, under the personality of God, who is the objective of all senses. So we are we are having the senses. All the senses are there. All the senses are meant to some or other glorify the Lord. Hmm? That is the whole purpose of all the senses. Hmm? Now, Prabhupada takes it as, as the theme, and he further explains that here in this part. In the um, the okay, the supreme person of God at Hari is the object for fulfill, fulfilling the senses of the of all living entities. Illusion by the glaring reflection of external energy, the living entities worship the senses instead of engaging them properly in fulfilling the desires of the supreme. This is the pathetic situation. Instead of worshiping the master of the senses, we are worshiping the senses. Hmm? 
Now, what is happening? Yeah, this is a verse I uh, sometime back I discussed with you. Proper course, it's in teachings of Lord Chaitanya as well. Akshno palam twa drisha darshanam hi tano palam twa drisha gatra sangaha jigva palam twa drisha kirtanam hi sudurlabha bhagavata hi loke. O devotee of the Lord, the purpose of the visual sense is fulfilled simply by seeing you and to touch your body is a fulfillment of bodily touch. The tongue is meant for glorifying your qualities because in this world a pure devotee of the Lord is very difficult to find. Why, why it is so? Why what is so special about the pure devotee? Because the pure devotee, Akshno, he is, he is engaging his eyes in always seeing the beautiful form of the Lord. The pure devotee is always engaged in, um, in, in touching the devotees and in touching the form of the deities and engaging the Lord's service. Because the pure devotee with his tongue is always uh, glorifying the Lord by chanting the names. Such a pure devotee is very rare to see. Right? That's what here proper is referring to. Now Prabhupada takes the contrast, uh, he says, but the impersonal is instead of doing so, converting the actions of the senses to be engaged in the service of the Lord. What they do? They try to make the conditioned soul senseless and the Lord also senseless. That is improper treatment for the conditioned souls. The diseased condition of the senses may be treated by curing the defect, not by uprooting the senses altogether. Hmm? This is the famous <laughs> Mayavadi way of doing things. You know, when, you go, when one fellow... You go to a doctor, he says, I have a problem with the eyes, so it's been paining for so long. Oh, I have an excellent treatment. Okay, come here. <laughs> I will cut here. I will just remove your eyes. Huh? What a foolishness. Huh? This is not a treatment. Huh? You have to treat the eyes in such a way that the disease is cured and you are able to use the senses again in the service. Okay. That's what Prabhupada is pointing out here. That is improper treatment for the conditioned souls. Which is the improper treatment? To become senseless. The diseased condition of the senses may be treated by curing the defect, not by uprooting the senses altogether. When there is some disease in the eyes, the eyes may be cured to see properly. Plucking out the eyes is no treatment. Similarly, the whole material disease is based on the process of sense gratification. And liberation from the diseased condition is re-engagement of the senses to see the beauty of the Lord. Hear his glories and act on his account. Thus, Brahmaji created the universal activities again. So that is the whole point. Now, what is it that needs to be done is we have to engage our senses in the Lord's service. And already we heard this from the nectar of instruction that when we are in a diseased condition, we will not be able to have higher experience, blissful experience. But nevertheless, the process is very pow powerful and blissful. If we continue with the process of engaging our senses in Krishna's service, then naturally our senses will be purified. We will be purified from a diseased condition and the, and the sugar which is by its natural constitutional position, which is sweet, will also be, be tasted sweet for us. Now, in this conditioned state, when someone is, um, Prabhupada gives the example of jaundice, when someone has got a jaundice disease, he will never be able to experience the sweetness of the sugar. Similarly, when we are, when we are haunted by this uh, propensity of trying to enjoy separate from the Lord, trying to control the material nature, when we have become slaves of the sense gratificatory process, then whatever that we see, we want to enjoy with our eyes. Whatever that we hear, we want to hear for our pleasure. Whatever we want to taste, we want to taste for our pleasure. Whatever we want to touch, we want to touch it for our pleasure. Then from this trying to uh, enjoy for our pleasure, it can it will be transformed. When we engage in our senses in the service of the Lord, naturally we will develop higher taste and we will be happy with that. Because Krishna is pleased by our endeavor. And we will be able to uh, taste the blissful name, form, uh, ityadi of the Lord. Okay. Now let's see what Prabhupada says. Srila Vishma Chakravarti Thakur says in his commentary. Indriyarthaya means unto him whose qualities such as beauty are the object of the senses. Purvavat means as in the previous Kalpa or Day of Brahma. By this it is understood that Brahma's bewilderment on seeing his daughter took place in the previous Kalpa. Not after hearing the instructions of the four verses of the Bhagavatam. <laughs> For the Lord has just said that in this Kalpa, Brahma would not be bewildered. Okay? So, that's, you know, immediately somebody, many times we get this question, you know, what about this? That happened in some other Kalpa. Okay? And also, how that happened also is very nice, Vishnu Chakra is saying. The bewilderment of Brahma when Krishna appeared on the earth 
during this kalpa must be understood to be a past time produced by the mercy of the lord so what is that bewilderment he is being spoken about yeah. no also he is speaking about this leela of um, brahma vimohan leela so that is also lord influence is there you know, we also remember we discussed that so the lord wanted that but otherwise <coughs> brahma is is intact no no issues is it clear any doubts um anything to do with the bewilderment if at all we see any bewilderment when this as first shilvishna sagar was commentary that is the lord's mercy is saying here because the lord wants an act some past time so it is happened but otherwise this this particularly this other things what we saw with brahma running behind the daughter that did not happen after this is so that makes it clear text 40 prajapati dharma patir ekada niyamanyaman bhadram prajanam anvichan atishtat swartakam yaya Thus, once upon a time, the forefather of living entities and the father of religiousness, Lord Brahma, situated himself in acts of regulative principles, desiring self-interest for the welfare of all living entities. So, the Lord, uh, Lord Brahma, he, he was, he himself was engaged in regulations, and he himself was um, desiring the welfare of all the servants uh, of the Lord, you know, all the prajas and everyone. so what happened what he did that is going to be discussed now so desiring welfare he engaged in some activity what activity so here vishnu sagar tagore very clearly says in the commentary once brahma a lot of dharma desiring the benefit of the progeny followed rules and regulations to fulfill his desire so what was the desire in creation you have to you have to engage in creation and also we can understand so lord brahma was also very merciful i already discussed this point before that he created the preaching field for the devotees one and also in that because the the material worlds are created uh, because then only the jeevas can come and try to indi- en- en- engage in trying to lord over the material nature and then further by the influence of the lord's mercy and the pure devotee's mercy they will be saved so lord brahma was instrumental in trying to fulfill the desire of the lord after this the conversation between narada and brahma which was previously described in shrimad bhagavatam 5th chapter canto 2 took place five verses describe these conditions under which this conversation took place desiring benefit for the progeny he followed rules and regulations teaching others by his conduct with his own purpose in mind let them also follow these rules so brahma himself set example for the common people to follow and then he is going to further talk to narada go to reveal this subject matter of this bhagavatam is it clear text 41 tang narada priyatamo rikta dhanam anubratah shushushamaan महाभागवतोषय Narada very much pleased his father and desired to know all about the energies of Vishnu, the master of all energies. For Narada was the greatest of all sages and greatest of all devotees. O King, Lord Brahma, being the creator of all living beings in the universe, is originally the father of several known sons like Daksha, the, the Chaturshanas, and Narada. In three departments of human knowledge disseminated by the Vedas, namely the fruity work, Karma Kanda. transcendental knowledge jnana kanda and devotional service upasana kanda so proper speaks about these three kandas jnana kanda upasana kanda and karma kanda and who are those responsible who took uh, responsibility for uh, elaborating on those subject matters is also proper is uh, relating in this purport devrishi narada inherited from his father brahma devotional service varad daksha inherited from his father fruity work and sanaka sanatana etc inherited from their father information about jnana kanda or transcendental knowledge but out of them all narada is described here as the most beloved son of brahma because of good behavior obedience meekness and readiness to render service unto the father 
So four things are explained here. What is it that Brahma was captivated by with Narada? Good behavior, obedience, meekness and readiness to render service unto the Father. So we need to develop all this. We should always be, we should show these four characteristics in front of our spiritual master. Show means we should always possess these qualities for us to, to become dear to our uh, spiritual master or to our uh, seniors. Uh, because this will always keep us in good spirit. So what again I will repeat this, good behavior, that means we should be always pure, <coughs> obedient, never become puffed up, always be submissive and uh, yeah, which also very much connected with meekness. We remember we saw this similar purport in the Narada Muni section, how Narada Muni pleased the Bhakti Vedantas. In that section also we saw a similar attitude was explained. And readiness to render service unto the Father. This is again another thing. You may have all these qualities, but <laughs> when you are asked to do something, you may not do. Correct? So that is the... So theoretically you may quote so many shlokas. Huh? You may even say, uh, you know, you just now you, you would have given a class from the Bhagavatam. You would have said that, uh, you know, Vidya Dadi Vinayam. Ah, such a nice verse he quoted. And then you are asked, oh, probably can you come and serve Prasadam? Uh, can you find some, someone, you know, I mean, I'm so, so, I'm now, I've become senior person. I don't have to do all these things. Render, we should always be in the spirit to render service whenever it is required. Or, no, uh, let's say we can even think like this. Uh, you know, let's say, you know, somebody studies in the Gurukula or he comes and joins the Krishna movement and gradually shows very sincere, does nice service. This, many times it happens. He comes and does nice service and he performs. Uh, very studious and then um, has many skills and after some after some time he gives very good lectures he does tremendous service he preaches make, makes many devotees and after some time what happens he thinks himself to be greater than his guru <laughs> this is because of illusion and then when the guru comes he is not giving any respect that means he has not understood anything so here is a warning it's a good thing we have to always remember these four things good behavior Obedience, meekness and readiness to render service unto the father. Father means spiritual father, any senior, that's, that should be the attitude. Then we are on a very safe path. Then we will never be carried away with pride. And now Prabhupada further glorifies Narada Muni. And Narada is famous as the greatest of all sages because of his being the greatest of all devotees. Narada is a spiritual master of many famous devotees of the Lord. He is a spiritual master of Prahlada, Dhruva and Vyasa. All great stalwart preachers. Who is the spiritual master? Narada Muni. Down to the forest animal hunter Kirata. His only business is to turn everyone to the transcendental loving service of the Lord. <laughs> Therefore all these features of Narada make him the dearmost son of his father. And all this is due to Narada's being a first class devotee of the Lord. Very nice relation. Huh? He is very dear to Brahma. Why? Because he is a first class devotee of the Lord. And what the first class devotee is doing? All the time thinking how to save conditioned souls from the clutches of Maya. Huh? The famous incident, one famous incident which which we, we can remind ourselves that the Hariyashvas and Shavalashvas. Huh? Daksha was so disappointed. <laughs> Narada came, <laughs> he came, preached and then he took all the 10,000 sons. Such a powerful message he gave. Everybody wanted to come and then shave up and join the Hare Krishna movement. <laughs> and then Daksha came was so upset. And then, uh, then again, another set of boys also, his sons who are, he saw, oh, such nice boys, they have to be shaved up, <laughs> potent boys, they are ready for uh, taking up this brahmacharya life. They should join, they should serve, they should dedicate, they should preach. So, Narada Muni did, he did take several risks like this. He didn't bother, you know, this Daksha said, you are cursed, you will never be able to stay in any place. Uh, you will not be able to stay in any place for more than three days. Now, okay, thank you, it's your blessing. Now I'll use this opportunity to go to different universes and try to see any other prospective candidates to preach further. Prabhupada in that section, of the, I think this comes in the fourth canto, is it? Yes. In one of the purports, Prabhupada says that following the parampara of Narada Muni, we are also cursed by the um, parents of our disciples so that we also are traveling around the world. We cannot stay in a place for more than for more than a short period of time, for three days or four days. So I am just traveling like the Prabhupada writes in all the Prabhupada. Okay. 
so Prabhupada goes on to say, Therefore, all these features of Narada make him the dearmost son of his father, and all this is due to Narada being a first class devotee of the Lord. The devotees are always anxious to know more and more about the Supreme Lord, the master of all energies, as he confirms in the Bhagavad Gita. Machitta, Vadgata, Prana, Bodhayantaf, Parasparam, Katayantas, Chamam, Nityam, Tushyanti, Charamanticha. The thoughts of my pure devotees dwell in me. Their lives are fully devoted to me, devoted to my service, and they derive great satisfaction and bliss from always enlightening one another and conversing about me. The Supreme Lord is unlimited and His energies are also unlimited. No one can know them completely. Brahmaji being the greatest living entity within the universe and being directly instructed by the Lord must know more than anyone else within this universe. Although such knowledge may not be complete, Thus, it is the duty of everyone to ask about the unlimited Lord from the spiritual master in the disciplic succession of Brahma, which descends from Narada to Vyasa, from Vyasa to Sukadeva and so on. <coughs> See, Brahma was very careful. He was, he could have, you know, he knew so much. He got so much knowledge from the Lord. He, but he was following the instructions of the Lord that to be, to, and no, Krishna is the supreme enjoyer. He is to be glorified. He is the uh, master of all the planets and he is the controller of all the planets and he is the real Bhokta. He had this knowledge, so he was very safe. He never got carried away. <coughs> Text 43. Tushtam nishamya pitaram lokanam prapitamaham devarshi paripapracha bhavanyan manu prichati. The great sage Narada also inquired. In detail from his father Brahma, the great grandfather of all the universe, after seeing him well satisfied, Narada Muni saw that Brahma was pleased, he very humbly put forth questions before Brahma to know further about the subject matter of the Lord and his interactions with Maya and how he is in control of everything. He was he wanted to know Brahma Narada Muni was very much interested in this. Now Prabhupada is making a point here that uh, how the transcendental knowledge we receive from a spiritual master? What is the process? How it is being? Uh, we, 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 what is the way by which you, you the knowledge is revealed to you? In sutra, what do you? What is your understanding? How do you, how the knowledge will be revealed to a devotee or to a student? How the knowledge will be revealed? What is the secret? What Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita? Nothing special. It's the same information. Yeah. So, Tadvidhi Pranipadena Pariprashtena Sevaya Upadek Shantiti Ejnanam Jnaninas Tattu Darshanaha. That's how the knowledge gets revealed. So, three things Pariprashtena, Pranipata, Sevaya. Three things are required. One is to be humble, one should ask, one should make inquiries in a humble state of mind and engage in this service, practical service to please him. Now, that's what Prabhupada is pointing out here in this purpose. The process of understanding spiritual or transcendental knowledge. From the realized person is not exactly like asking an ordinary question from the schoolmaster. Nowadays we can see absolutely no etiquette, nothing. Uh, everything is asked in a challenging mood or, or um, everything is made into some comedy. Or some student, I have seen in my, in my school days also, uh, the student would have already, uh, would have, he knew the solution for the problem. You know, for example, I am just giving a simple example. So there are in the in specifically in India, in specifically in Tamil Nadu, uh, and maybe other places as well. There are different boards. Boards means there is a state board, there is a matriculation board, there is the central board of different educational systems are there. Uh, educational boards are there, and in different educational boards, the knowledge that is given, subject matter, will be different. Specifically, the central board of syllabus of education will have additional information, more. Uh, details will be given in that. So some students are a little smart, they, they do refer to those books and uh, the teacher may not be aware of some things. Okay, that's another point, this is all speaking material from a very mundane way, the teacher is supposed to know many things. But the teacher will be will be aware of some some, some things which is re that is relevant to his subject, whatever that he has to take. Now one student will be too smart, he will know about too many other things and he will, if, he will question the teacher, not his intention is not to know what is the solution, how to know what is the answer. Not that's not the intention. The intention is to show his superiority, how great he is, how he knows, how he can solve it. He will ask, so what is the other way by which we can solve this problem? Like that, he will pose some questions. So there is only, there is only one methodology which is very much as 
uh, with respect to that particular subject matter. But he knows other methodology, but just to pull the teacher down, he will ask this. So this is not the way things work in spiritual life. Nothing you can understand like this. Prabhupada points out that. School masters in the modern days are paid agents for giving some information. But the spiritual master is not a paid agent. And also there is another point. You know, I'm, I said from the student perspective, you know, from the teacher's perspective also in the schools, you know, time is 11.48 and 39 seconds. I have another 30 seconds to go. Uh, after, that, after that, the class is over. You ask any question or anything, some, the teacher just cuts off and then he just moves. He is not interested in saying anything because he said, I am paid for my class. This is what, oh, other things we will see tomorrow. Goodbye. Bye-bye. This is again another problem with the school teacher. Hmm? Arjuna was advised to receive transcendental knowledge from the realized person by surrender, questions and service. We discussed this already. Okay. Then again another secret is spoken here. To whom the knowledge will be revealed. This is again a powerful Shruti Mantra which has got the essence of the Vedic philosophical understanding. Yasya Deve Parabhaktir Yata Deve Tata Gurau Tasyaite Katitaya Artaha Prakashante Mahatmana Yasya Deve Parabhaktir Yata Deve Tata Gurau to the degree you have, or rather than to say to the degree, that you must have complete faith in the Supreme Lord. Similar faith you should have in the spiritual master also. When your faith is um, equally present in the Supreme Lord and the Guru, then the knowledge will be revealed to you. Prakashante Mahatmana. The knowledge will be revealed to the sincere seeker. One cannot be a bona fide and authorized spiritual master unless one has been strictly obedient to his spiritual master. So yes, he should have been a sincere student, then he can become a sincere spiritual master. Brahmaji as a disciple of the Supreme Lord received the real knowledge and imparted it to his dear disciple Narada. And similarly Narada as a spiritual master handed over this knowledge to Vyasa and so on. Therefore, the so called formal spiritual master and disciple are not faxes in miles of Brahma, Narada or Narada and Vyasa. The relationship between Brahma and Narada is reality while the so called formality of the relation between the cheater and the cheated. Uh, while, the, while the so called formality is the relation between the cheater and cheated. Now he is saying that, you see, it is not just, you see, Brahma was so faithful and sincere to Krishna, and, from, and Narada was so sincere and faithful to Brahma. Similarly, if somebody follows this parampara properly, like this being sincere student, then you become a proper guru. If not, you will be part of the system of cheaters and cheated. Understand? So it's not that you just bluff around. You cannot bluff around. You will be you will be caught. See, there is one saying. I think it was a saying by the American ex-American president. Uh, who was that? I think it was by Kennedy. I think he says, "You can cheat some people for some time. Huh? You cannot cheat all the people for all the time. It is not possible." Well, Krishna can do that. <laughs> He can, he can do, he can cover himself up or he can, it is possible for the Lord. But generally, in this world, you can, how long you can just show yourself as an imposter? Some time you can do, but you will be caught. Uh, time you will be caught. Okay. The relationship between Brahma and Narada is reality, while the so-called formality is the relation between the cheater and the cheated. It is clearly mentioned here, here with that Narada is not only well-behaved, meek and obedient, but also self-controlled. Wow, this is another important point. One who is not self-controlled, especially, specifically in sex life, can become neither a disciple nor a spiritual master. One must have disciplinary, disciplinary training in controlling speaking, anger, the tongue, the mind, the belly and the genitals. One who has controlled the particular senses mentioned above is called a ghost swami. Without becoming a ghost swami, one can become neither a disciple nor a spiritual master. The so-called spiritual master without sense control is certainly the cheater. And the disciple of such a so-called spiritual master is a cheater. So you may dress like a like great saint and you may have many followers. But if you are just doing, you are engaged in cheating business, you can't really impart the transcendental knowledge. So one should not think of Brahmaji as a dead great grandfather as we have experienced on this planet. <laughs> he is the eldest great, oldest great grandfather and he is, he is still living. Narada is also living. So the age of the inhabitants of the Brahmaloka planet is mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita. So the inhabitants of this small planet Earth can hardly calculate even the duration of one day of Brahma. So again this is the point, we are so insignificant, we cannot even calculate the time of Brahma. It's so, such a big time and we cannot even perceive how big is the time. 
although calculation is there you know there's so many uh, trillions and millions of years it, it, the calculations are there but it shows that we are so insignificant we you know we cannot get a grasp of it of, 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 get a grasp of everything that's the point okay text 44 तस्मादं भागवत पुराण दशलक्षण प्रोक्त भगवता प्राह प्रीतपुत्रा भूतकृत देर अपॉन द सप्लीमेंटरी वेरिक लिटरेचर श्रीमद भागवत विच वॉज डिस्क्राइब बाय द पर्सनलिटी ऑफ गॉड एंड एंड विच कंटेन टेन कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स वॉज टोल विथ सैटिस्फैक्शन बाय द फादर ब्रह्म टू हिस्स सन नारदा सो नाउ ब्रह्म स्टार्टेड रिवीलिंग दिस नॉलेज टू नारदा So, proper the commentary he says, "Janma desi yatha is the beginning. Yet the four verses in which it is said that the Lord is the root of everything that be, beginning from the creation up to the supreme abode of the Lord, naturally explain the ten characteristics. One should not misunderstand by wrong interpretations that the Lord spoke only four verses, and that therefore all the rest of the seventeen thousand nine hundred ninety nine, seventeen thousand nine hundred ninety six verses are useless." Now we will see in the commentary of Shri Vishnu Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur. He says that there are some sayings, some references are there that the Lord spoke the eighteen thousand verses also. <laughs> This is something which is being said by Vishnu Chak Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur. So anyway, so the point is that we will be seeing in the next chapter what are those ten characteristics which the Bhagavatam discusses. The entire Bhagavatam is split on these ten characteristics that we will be seeing in the next chapter. I am not going to get into it. The ten characteristics, characteristics, as will be explained in the next chapter, require so many verses just to explain them properly. Brahma ji had also advised Narada previously that he should expand the idea he had heard from Brahma ji. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed this to Sri Rupa Goswami in a nutshell, but the disciple Rupa Goswami expanded this very elaborately, and the same subject was further expanded by Jiva Goswami and even further by Sri Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur. We are just trying to follow in the footsteps of all these authorities. So, Shrimad Bhagavatam is not like ordinary fiction or mundane literature. It is unlimited in strength, and however one may expand it according to one's own ability, Bhagavatam still cannot be finished by such expansion. This is the whole point. Why Bhagavatam cannot be finished? Because Bhagavatam is not different from Krishna. Krishna's glories are unlimited. It is ever expanding. Similarly, when the potent Acharya, when he 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 heard it from his Acharya. and when he gives his own he gives his own realizations on this verses it's more further expanded and then his disciple who is coming in parampara he hears and then he gives further explanation when he speaks it again some more additions are there he, his own realizations are the same subject matter is there they all have add some realizations so that is why you see um, narada narada spoke this to vyasa brahma spoke to narada narada spoke to vyasa Vyasa spoke to Shukadev, correct? So Shukadev Goswami, when Shukadev Goswami spoke, Nigamak Kalpataror Galitam Palam Shukamukad Amrita Drava Sangyutam, isn't it? So it became even more sweet. When Shukadev Goswami spoke, it became extremely sweet. So many people were there to hear this message. Hmm? So he had his own realizations. Bhagavatam. So it's further become more relish. So all those great devotees coming in parampara, so they are also giving. So now Shilap, we are hearing Shilap Prabhupada's commentary, which is such a nectar on this Bhagavatam. It's ever expanding. And there are disciples of Shilap Prabhupada and other devotees who hear this message and they repeat. And then, with whatever which is within their realization, they are also explaining. And then it is more relishable. It becomes more and more relishable. It becomes never it becomes like chewing the chewed. It's not that. This this is so relishable. It's we are not able to understand. It's ever expanding. The bliss is ever expanding. You hear the same leela again and again. Never feel bored because the, that is the Lord's amazing nature. Hmm? So that's the whole point is being made here. So we 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 the other day <coughs> we were hearing that verse where the acharyas are explaining that why it is so, it's like that because Krishna is 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 like that. Krishna's nature is like that. It's, it's ever fresh. and we can't perceive this how we cannot perceive this subject matter that you know how it is ever fresh out because everything we see in this material world it has a beginning and it is an end after some time it becomes we become too familiar with some subject matter but not with this with the subject matter of the supreme lord shri krishna his name form his um, paraphernalia everything is is ever fresh and is so glorious 
Srimad Bhagavatam being the sound representation of the Lord is simultaneously explained in four verses and in four billion verses all the same. In as much as the Lord is smaller than the atom and bigger than the unlimited sky. Such is the potency of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Manoraniyan Mahato Mahiyan. So, here, uh, we will hear the Vashtri Vishnu Tukritapur says, Brahma then spoke the scripture with ten characteristics in detail, which the Lord has spoken in summary in four verses. Some say, however, that the Lord himself spoke the complete twelve volumes, the entire scripture, endowed with ten characteristics, after speaking the four verses as a summary. <laughs> this is again an uh, opinion of some people. Okay. We will go to the next verse, text 45. Narada Praha Munaye Saraswatyas Tate Nripa Dhyayate Brahma Paramam Vyasaya Mitate Jase. In succession, in succession, O King, the great sage Narada instructed Srimad Bhagavatam unto the unlimitedly powerful Vyasadev, who meditated in devotional service unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Absolute Truth, on the bank of the river Saraswati. So this is a verse which describes about his meditation. Ato Mahabhaga Bhavanam Ogadrik Shuchi Shrava Satyarato Dhrita Vrataha Purukravasya Akila Bhanda Bhuktayem Samadina Anusmarata Dvicheshtitam O greatly fortunate, pious philosopher, with your name and fame are universal and you are fixed in the absolute truth with spotless character and, and infallible vision. I ask you to meditate upon the activities of the personality of God whose activities are unparalleled. So in the disciplic succession of the Brahma Sampradaya, the practice of yoga meditation is not neglected. Amazing, huh? This is a is showing nice insight. So he's saying that yes, you meditate, he says. Narada Muni says to ask that you meditate. But meditate on what? Impersonal void. You meditate on the chair, on this bench, on this whatever you want to meditate. No, he's saying that meditate on the Lord's uh, beautiful form. Then you see what happens because of that. Okay. But because the devotees are bhakti yogis, they do not undertake the trouble to meditate upon the impersonal Brahman as indicated here. They meditate on Dhyayato Bhagavato Rupam. Again, in Dhruva Maharaj's one of the section very clearly says meditation means we also heard this before. Dhyayato Bhagavato Rupam. That dhyana should be done on the form of the Lord. So as indicated here, they meditate on Brahma Paramam or the Supreme Brahman. Brahman realization begins from the impersonal effulgence, but by further progress of such meditation, manifestation of the Supreme Soul, Paramatma realization takes place. And progressing further, realization of the Supreme Person of God is fixed. Sri Narada Muni, as spiritual master of Vyasadeva, knew very well the position of Vyasadeva and thus he certified the qualities of Srila Vyasadeva as fixed in the absolute truth with great vow, etc. Narada advised meditation upon the transcendental activities of the Lord. Impersonal Brahman has no activities, but the personality of God has many activities and all such activities are transcendental without any tinge of material quality. In the activities of the Supreme Brahman were material activities. If the activities of the Supreme Brahman were material activities, then Narada would not have advised Vyasadeva to meditate upon them. So why Prabhupada is saying that? Because this being the impersonal is point out this always. Hmm? So Prabhupada is pointing out that if that is the case, then why Narada should ask him to meditate on, on the Supreme Lord? And the Parang Brahma is Lord Sri Krishna as confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita. And Prabhupada quotes about how Krishna is the Supreme Lord. When Vyasadeva fixed his mind in meditation, he did not he did it in Bhakti Yoga trance and actually saw the Supreme Person with Maya. Huh? The illusory energy in contrast in contraposition. So we saw the Lord saw the Lord and Maya is very far. She is very shy. Huh? We saw in the second hand also the verse, this is Lajjamana. She is feeling very shy. She didn't want to come in front of the Lord. She is far away, but she is, she is there. So Vyasa could see that. As we have discussed before, the Lord's Maya illusion is also a representation because Maya has no existence without the Lord. Darkness is not independent of light. Without light, no one can experience the contraposition of darkness. Correct? Again, another nice example. Probably. However, this Maya illusion cannot overcome the Supreme Person of God but stands apart from Him. Apart from Him. Therefore, perfection of meditation is realization of the personality of God along with His transcendental activities. Meditation on the impersonal Brahman is a troublesome business for the meditator as confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita. Prabhupada is contrasting here of the two meditations. Meditation on the impersonal Brahman and meditation on the personal form of the Lord. So the last verse of this verse, which speaks that the Lord is going, the Brahma 
Lord uh, Brahma will give uh, further answers to the questions will be in the rest of the Bhagavatam. Yad utaham tvaya prishto vairajat purushadidam yatasi tadupakyaste prashnan anyangs chakritsnasaha kritsnasaha O King, your questions as to how the universe became manifested from the gigantic form of the personality of Godhead as well as other questions, I shall answer in detail by explanation of the four verses already mentioned. So that means he is going to expand it and the other subsequent cantos, this will be explained as well also. As said in the beginning of the Srimad Bhagavatam, this great transcendental literature is the ripened fruit of the tree of the Vedic knowledge and therefore all questions that can be humanly possible regarding the universal affairs beginning from its creation are all answered in the Bhagavatam. The answers depend only on the qualification of the person who explains them. The ten divisions of the Srimad Bhagavatam as explained by the great speaker of the Sri Shukadeva Goswami are the limitations of all questions and intelligent persons will derive all intellectual benefits from them by proper utilization. So now we can see in the rest of the Bhagavatam, all the ten subject matters of the Bhagavatam will be discussed in the next chapter. And also in the third canto of the Bhagavatam, we will see further discussions of again about the creation. Again, Vidura will be asking further questions and then to Maitreya, more explanations given again on the creation of the uh, this, co- this cosmos and everything. More explanations. Again, in the fifth canto, we will see the structure of the cosmology and further explanations are given. So, these ten subject matters you will be seeing. In the rest, the whole Bhagavatam will be classified according to these ten subject matters. And also we will be seeing in the next chapter the what are the qualities of a Purana, Mahapurana and so many other things will be explained in the next chapter. So, thank you very much. We will stop here. And if you have questions from this chapter, any questions, any realizations, um, you are welcome to ask. How the third shoka of the Shoki mm-hmm. is classified as uh, Prayuja? How the. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, let's go to the third verse. Or shall I let me open the slide that would be. Yata Mahanti Bhutani Bhuteshu Chachvasheshvanu Pravishtana Pravishtani Tata Teshu Nateshvaham. O Brahma, please know that the universal elements enter into the cosmos and at the same time do not enter into the cosmos. Similarly, I myself exist within everything created and at the same time I am outside of everything. Now, this the point is that immediately when we read this verse, we are unable to understand that this, this is referring to Prayojana. This is referring to the love of God. Now, what is the point here? The point is that why we say this, say this verse as the Prayojana? Because the prayojana is what is the result of abhideya hmm? or uh, when or you know you get the sambandha uh, you get you have abhideya and you have prayojana let me just put, put the first of all explain the philosophical concept behind it sambandha is our relationship with the lord the, the, the relationship of the material nature uh, or how do we perceive the material nature how the material nature is related to the lord all those things we get to know clearly by sambandha gyan or we understand that the lord is there his energies are there there is the uh, internal internal energy of the Lord, there is the external energy of the Lord, and we belong to the marginal energy. So all these things we understand. So how we, this understanding is the, all we get it by Sambandha. Now after having known this, so Abhideya talks about, okay, now you know your relationship with the Lord, now how do you develop this relationship? That is the process of Abhideya. Hmm? And uh, so that we saw in the fourth verse of the Chatur Shloki, that, that you have to pra- engage in the sadhana bhakti process and accepting a spiritual master, going through the process of shavanam kirtanam, dhanamaveda bhakti. Then when senses are purified, then Lord gradually you will attain the... Then, now this is the point. Now by the process of sadhana bhakti, what is it that you are going to achieve? You are going to achieve love of God. You are going to achieve affection to the Lord. You are going to get, to get the preeti. Now that preeti is hinted in this verse. How it is hinted in this verse? Now this is the point. The Lord is saying that. That's what I was speaking about the Paroksha Vada. If you see, so it is in this verse, that is why it is hidden. That's why it is called as Sarahasyam. Tadangam. Hmm? First one is Jnana, next is Vijnana. Then the last one is Tadangam. Angam is, angam is the process by which you, you get to know the Rahasyam. What is the Rahasyam? The Rahasyam is the most confidential thing that uh, a devo- a relationship between the devotee and the Lord, which is simply pure love. Now, how do you perceive that pure love here in this verse? That is the point now. 
Oh Brahma, please know that the universal element is entering into the cosmos. So here it is explained about the Achinda Beda Veda Tattva. The Lord, that's what if we see the commentary, Prabhupada also points out that one will be able to see the Lord within the atoms here and also the, the Lord in the is, is existing eternally in his abode. Who can see this? Only the pure devotee can see this. Because the pure devotee is anointed with love, influenced by the Yoga Maya potency, he can see that. Others cannot see that. This is an important aspect. And how it is like this? Because of the why it is like this? Because the Lord also likes this Parakshavada. He doesn't want to, he doesn't just say like this directly. Indirectly it is explained. So this that's why this verse is speaking about the Prayojana Tattva. You can see in the purport also Prabhupada is pointing out. We will see from Prabhupada's purport how he is pointing out this. You will see the Premanjana Churita. Yeah, see, this is the point. This vision is the real mystery of spiritual knowledge. Which vision? Let's call it love. The impersonalist can imagine or even can imagine or even perceive that the Supreme Brahman is thus all pervading and therefore they conclude that there is no possibility of his personal form because they can't see everything is impersonal, everything is uh, they don't understand energy, they don't have the concept of energy at all. They said impersonal, everything is impersonal. Herein lies the mystery of transcendental knowledge of the personality of Godhead. This mystery is transcendental love of Godhead and one who is surcharged with transcendental love of Godhead can without difficulty see the personality of Godhead in every atom and every movable or immovable object. And at the same time, he can see the personality of God in his own abode, Goloka, enjoying eternal pastimes with his eternal associates, who are also expansions of his transcendental existence. Now, Prabhupada further he says, This vision is the real mystery of spiritual knowledge, as stated by the Lord in the beginning of his instructions to Brahmaji. Sarahasyam Tadangam Cha. This mystery is the most confidential part of the knowledge of the Supreme. And it is impossible for the mental speculators to discover it by hint of intellectual gymnastics. The mystery can be revealed through the process recommended by Brahmaji in the Brahma Samhita as follows. Premanjana Churita Bhakti Vilochanena Santa Sadaivar Deyeshu Vilokayanti. So that's why Prabhupada is pointing out this particular verse, quoting this verse, uh, showing that when one is anointed with pure love of God, he will be able to see the Lord who is. Um, Outside and also is inside. Hmm. <coughs> mm. Okay. Mm. Sorry. This is inside and outside. Yeah. See, actually, everything. The Lord is everywhere. The Lord is everywhere, but only to the devotee He reveals that. Others cannot see. So the and the point of mystery is that what is it that what is it that makes the Lord reveal? The mystery is what is it that the Lord that, that makes the Lord available to his devotee? The devotee's love for him. The devotee is captured by the love of his devotee of his uh, the Lord is captured by the love of his devotee. So that is the that is why this prema is the topmost thing. Even the Lord himself is captivated by that. Lord becomes uh, the, the controlled by his devotee. That's the whole point. You will understand. Now, again, as you, you again, I will clarify that point. As you ask this about this big jnana, that uh, then why is this second verse is referring to the realization? Yeah, you in only in that pure pure state, you will be completely free from Maya. <laughs> Otherwise, you, anytime you can just get carried away. So till the time you, you may you may just look for the reflection, but when you are very when you are surcharged with love. You don't see, you don't see, you are not captivated by the reflection, nothing, because you are in t completely in touch with the original light. So that's why that, that realization you develop by practicing this sadhana bhakti and when you are raised to the level of uh, love, you will be completely purified of it. Does, does it make sense? Okay. Anything else? So, so many amazing things we can learn from this uh, particular chapter of the dedication that Brahma had uh, to the Lord, performance of austerities, what kind of austerities we should perform, how we should uh, perform devotional austerity, austerities to develop devotional service and that such austerities are devotional service in itself. Krishna says, I am that austerity, he says. That's another amazing thing we can see. And uh, that's why we have in our whole process, you know, we fast on Eka disease, we fast for Janmashtami, uh, we fast for other Vaishnava appearance and disappearances. Why? Why we do that? 
we want we are showing our exhibiting our devotion to the lord that my dear lord i really want to please you uh, um, you are my first priority in my life my senses are not my priority and i will do anything for you we just show some sincerity to the lord and you know if, and, and also we can see shri chaitanya mahaprabhu now if somebody can um, what do you call uh, someone can capture the lord just by uh, performance of austerities no you can cannot we can see the case of um, what is his name durvasa muni was a very austere person lord was not pleased but he was so pleased with ambarish maharaj so that is the point anything else for our day to day practice of krishna consciousness we can learn from um, brahma's practice see brahma has to deal with the creation of the universe which means that he has to deal with um, he has to deal with rajoguna i already explained about this now one thing is that you know when you create something with your own hands or you are you are personally involved in some creation okay please listen up huh? when you are involved in this creation naturally it's very natural that you get you will get attached to it you did something on your on your own naturally will be attached to it so krishna is giving you indication so many universes will come and then go till so many things will come and then go and you, because you see you will be out and disturbed oh such amazing creation we did and now it is all gone <laughs> pralaya comes everything is gone and lord says just be attached to me these things will come and then go same thing in our practice of spiritual life every day day in and day out so many things we are dealing with we may we may be engaged in preaching we may engaged in cultivating people so many things we may be we may be serving somewhere and if is for the mission of the lord we may have to shift our place for the mission of the lord we may have to take different roles so we should not be attached to our own ideas and our own conception we should see what is required for the mission of the lord what is what our my spiritual master is requesting me what is the what will please and if we are in that line in that mission then we will not be carried away by maya <laughs> Uh, such an amazing thing that we can learn from this incident how brahma is dealing with that so another example i can give you you know like for example sometimes we can see you may be working on let's say now let's say you are doing some editing video editing you are doing all day you are working 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 so much you are working 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 and then um, around you know it was almost 12 o'clock so much you worked and then you realize oh i forgot to save and then what you do at the moment instead of saving the file you deleting the file can you imagine what will be your situation you will be devastated with all your hard work that you have done um and then so something like that you know i was just thinking about it you know brahma so much he did so much endeavor he did everything and then everything pralaya comes everything is finished but he has to be sober you know, so again so many universes are going to come creation is going to happen creation is going to go so the one thing is that in our life also we we may face so many situations but if we are there is going to be several reversals that may happen in our life but if we are going to be sticking to the process of krishna consciousness if we develop our attachment to krishna then so many reversals may happen may not we will take it as an opportunity to surrender to krishna that should be our spirit okay okay thank you very much uh, we will stop here uh, and uh, <coughs> we will continue the 10th chapter of the bhagavatam that will sum up the second canto of the bhagavatam hare krishna so please go through this purports and uh, and uh, please as as we said the chatur shloki verses please uh, make your uh, take notes from those subdivisions whatever that we had given thank you very much shri prabhupada ki jai shrimad bhagavatam ki jai hare krishna